Good morning. This is Monday, July the 13th, and yesterday uh, during our Sunday school hour, we started uh, sharing some thoughts as we read and discuss and pray through the book Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire by Jim Cimbala. If you don't have a copy, I encourage you to get a copy and read it. It'll change your life if you're seeking God. And we began that yesterday and, and went over chapter one uh, together, uh, sharing some thoughts together and, and uh, hopefully stimulating us to desperately seek God. Uh, I want to share some thoughts this week and the following weeks uh, about the book that is, if I've read it, some thoughts that have come to me. And so today we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Uh, just a few verses as we think along these lines. So let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come into your presence. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit that we learned about last week in Galatians. For the evidence of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit-filled life. May we seek you today humbly, repentantly, praying and desiring to know our great God. May we seek you because of who you are, not because of what you'll do for us, just because of who you are. I pray that you'd bless this time today and stir our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to think about let Yahweh bless. Yahweh wants to bless us. He wants to share his grace with us. But a lot of times we won't allow him to. So I, I want us to think along that line. Let Yahweh bless. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to read verses 15 through 20 is all we're going to read today. But I hope that it will stir your heart and cause you to think about your relationship with Jesus. Are you saved or not? And if you say you are, then your fellowship with him. Are you living in the Spirit or not? Uh, and these are things we have to ask ourselves as individuals, as families, as churches. The decision of decisions in verse 15. Well, let me give you some background. I'm sorry. Uh, the Israelites are complaining to Moses. They said, we should have stayed in Egypt. We'd have been better off in Egypt. We'd had food in Egypt. They forget how hard being a slave is. But they said, we'd have all this stuff, and we're just wandering around out here. So they're given a decision to either seek God or not to seek him. And in verse 15, it says, See, I've set, Moses is speaking, I've set before you today life and good, death and evil. He's saying, I'm laying it out for you. You can live in the flesh and die and be corrupted. Or you can live in the Spirit and you can have life and goodness. You choose. You can follow me or you can go your own way. <clears throat> so we have a decision to make. The Israelites had a decision to make. And we today, in the sound of my voice, reading this passage, have a decision to make. Verse 16 uh, there's the blessings of righteousness. It says, For if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I commanded you today, he said, if you do what God says to do, if you live like God says to live, he says, by loving the Lord your God, he says, obey him and love him, walking in his ways, living the way God wants you to. And by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to take possession of. The blessings of God come to those who love him, who wait on him, who reverence and fear him, who obey him, who live with him. They are blessed people. Okay? So here's the blessings that God lays out there for us. He says, choose the blessings. In verse 17, we see a turned heart turned away from God, not toward him. It says, but if your heart turns away and you will not hear, if you're determined 
not to believe, if you're determined not to have faith, he says, but draw near, I mean, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. You have a deaf ear to God. You're not going to listen, which means you're not going to obey. And you're drawn to other things. You're drawn to the world. You're drawn to all the world has to offer. You're drawn to fulfill the desires of your own heart, having it your way, your opinion, your thoughts. Uh, and if you're drawn to this, to serve yourself, to serve other things, he says in verse 18, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. Remember we read in Galatians that if we live in the flesh, we're going to reap death and corruption. This is what he's saying. He says, this is all that's out there for you. He said, you shall not live long in the land that you're going over the Jordan to enter and possess. This is God's curse. His blessings, if you love him and if you uh, wait on him and you fear him and you obey him, and the curse of perishing and death and evil if you don't. Decision time. Verse 19. He says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you. A witness is someone who stands up and testifies on behalf. They're eyewitnesses to what happened. They, they know what happened because they were there. He said, you know, when we sign a contract or something, we have witnesses. A notary public is a witness. And, a, and it puts their stamp there that this actually happened, that this signature is true, uh, that this person did this. And so we have witnesses to the things we do legally. And, and he's saying here, I call heaven, all of heaven and all of earth, the created things of God, to witness against you, O oh man, that I have set before you life and death. You, it's a witness that you've been called to a decision. Blessings and a curse. Therefore, choose life that you may and your offspring may live. Verse 20 says, Loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days. There is no life outside of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. God created us and gave us life. It's because of him and his grace that we draw every breath that we have um, length of days and that you dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give to Abraham Isaac Jacob and to give them now I know that this is Old Testament and I know he's taught Moses is talking to him about God's promises to them to go into the land that God gave to Abraham and become a mighty nation but I think we see principles here the principle is that God's blessings only would come from him. Because, see, he doesn't change. God doesn't change. He operates the same. He still rolls the way he used to. And his blessings only come to those who love him, who fear him, who wait on him, who obey him, who walk in his ways, who live with him. God doesn't bless sin. God, God doesn't bless rebellion. God doesn't bless evil. So if we're living a life of sin, if we're living like God doesn't, God says we should, then don't say. I'm sorry, I got confused there. <laughs> if we're living like God says not to, don't say. God blessed us because he did. You see, we can't live like we read in Galatians, an immoral life, a sexually immoral life, an ethically immoral life. We can't live that way. We can't do evil. We can't live in the flesh and say, God blessed me because he won't. Now, it, it rains on the just and the unjust, yes. Life happens to the just and the unjust, yes. But that's not the blessings of God. That's two different things. You see, 
God will only bless a repentant man, a humble man who's seeking him. Others may feel the blessings of God, may see the blessings of God, but not experience them. Because God doesn't bless sin. He can't. He's repulsed at it. And so that's what I, I, I want us to think about. If, if our churches are living in the flesh, they're sinning. If I'm living in the flesh, I'm sinning. If my family's living in the flesh, we're sinning. And we're out from under the blessings of God. Lord, help us. Because we don't even know it. And we don't understand. So how can we repent? God, convict us of the unholiness in our lives. God, convict us of the unholiness in our churches and our families. May we be desperate for you. For our holy God. May we be desperate for you the one who created us and loved us. May we seek you with all our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. May you be blessed today as you humble yourself before a holy God and seek to love him and seek to reverence him and seek to wait on him today.